Hey, yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, Mark the Protégé. What's we are good? live with another episode of the Overthinkers Podcast. Hashtag the OT. The OT. Where we got to ask ourselves, did we think too much about it or not enough, enough about it? it? I am here with my co-host. DJ Mo CD. What's good, people? And the best sound guy in the game. What's good, Carlos? What up, what up, what up? Los. Bum, bum, bum. No. <laughs> we going to get a soundboard one we day and we going to be able to do all the cool no, sounds. No, no one ever reminds me to send y'all a soundboard app, but continue. continue. We, 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 yeah, we'll do that. We gotta. We need a sound. We could have used one today. You want to know why? why? Because with our guest today, I would have liked some gunshots and shit to be going on in there. <laughs> or some sirens. <laughs> Hey, y'all made me sound so violent. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We could have had like the soundtrack to Minnesota Society play. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, that would have been dope. Yeah, it, it I'll, ain't take mine. That. I'll take that. I'll take. I'll take that over the gunshots any day. Yeah, most definitely. Most we got straight out the southeast, man. Hofa. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we ain't gonna do that, man. We're straight out the southeast, Houston, Texas, man. This dude's raw and uncut with mm. it, man. This delivery is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like I said, I got on Facebook Live earlier. Or no, I got on Facebook, I posted a video, and I said, yeah, bro, like, yeah. when this dude raps, it seems like he's grabbing you by your collar, you know what I'm saying? Making you pay attention to what he got to say. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and to me, bro, it's like this dude just stands out to me, kind of like how back in the day when the H-Town scene, like, had, you know, like, the flashiness, you know what I'm saying? The swangers and all that shit. But then right. you had right. you had Zero, you had ABN, which was slightly different. You know what I'm saying? They told a different side of the scene. Street military told a different side of the scene. You know what I'm saying? And that's where this guy comes in. Everybody, we got Hoffa in hey, the building. Hoffa. What's going on, man? We up Hoffa. in this bitch. What's good? What's Music good? corruption in this hole. Huh? 100, man. Hoffa, how you feeling, man? Nah, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling good. How you feeling? Not too bad, man. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm, I'm used to coming in here saying that, oh, man, I've had better days. But actually, I ain't going to lie. It's not too bad lately, bro. 2021's been okay for me, man. It's not too bad, you know. Uh, 2020 sucked, but uh, we're in a new year, and you're our first guest for the new year, man. All so right, I appreciate right, you being right. here, man. Hell yeah. Real quick, we're we're probably at one of the biggest off the jump numbers of live viewers already. Man, oh, man, shit, shout out, shit. Out, shout hey, out, shout out. follow and do all that good stuff. Hey, damn, man. how far you bring, man? Goddamn, right. we ain't bring been on crowd. here five minutes. Boy, brought the whole bring a crowd. Hey, yeah, man, yeah, that's, that's live. Up. Boy brought the whole Southeast out South one time. The whole hood put up on the live. Hey, yeah, what's good, yeah. y'all? <laughs> hey, yo, yeah, man, yeah. If, you, if you're watching this right now, man, you yes. know, hit that share button, that like, button. comment. If you have a question for Hoffa, leave it in there. My boy Carlos is going to read it. You know what I'm saying? That's and we'll be sure to make sure that that reaches Hoffa right now, man. And yeah, and Real's in the cut. Real appreciate you being hey, here. Hey, yo, what's up, cuz? He's helping produce this episode, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, behind yeah. the scenes over you know there. Behind the scenes over yeah. there. It's nothing but artists in the building, man. You feel yo, me? For sure. Yo, man. He, been... he was my only feature, so might as well be my only He is your here. only feature, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's your only feature on Man of the Year. Bro, <laughs> bro, I was gonna Make get sure into you get that your later. Credit, huh? We're gonna perform that song. Yeah, yeah, right <laughs> yo, yo, we can have a live performance for the right, OT right, flows. Right. That'd be wild. Yo, you know what's crazy is that um, we'll get more into that song later. But what was crazy was that whenever I actually got uh, like went through the track list or whatever, and I actually and I listened to your whole album and everything, I had to try to tell myself I was like, bro, like is real really on the song because y'all kind of sound identical. I was gonna say so that. I was looking for the real feature, but then like I, I got in detail with it. I was like, oh shit, real's on the hook. <laughs> I was like, bro, this shit's yeah. so hard. But like bro, not only are y'all Kim folks and y'all artists, but I was like, damn, like they damn near almost sounded like a little bit, bro. You know what I'm saying? They got that strength in their voice. Yeah, you know I ain't saying? gonna lie, I was the same way. I was listening, I was like, where's real? Where's real? But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard that. And I've heard it. I heard it before. No, nah, that's one of my favorite tracks off the album, man. But yo, yeah. it's it's been it's been quite an eventful day today, man. I think uh, I think what Trump fucking it's his last day, last full day, <laughs> last full day in there. Like he's moving out. What? They got like fucking like U hauls and shit. He at the ain't broke <laughs> shit there. There Ain't nothing in there belonging to him. I, Not even his wife. So how does that, yeah. Carlos, you might know, how does that work? Does that mean, like, he's going to, like, it's his last day, like, sleeping there, like, tonight? <laughs> or right. Probably, bro. By 8 o'clock in the morning, he needs to, you know, they already put the notice on the door, and he's like, get out. <laughs> or, or keep him, or, and we're going to resell all the shit that you left inside the bitch. I bet the, I bet the people that work for him are probably going to be like, oh, yo, like, I bet they're going to treat him like shit come tomorrow. Like, yo, you got to hurry up and leave. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm more interested to see who he's partnering. They're talking about him partnering Joe Exotic and shit and Lil Wayne and all bunch of other motherfuckers. Cool. Bro. Joe Exotic got a motherfucking limousine outside the outside his prison here in Texas right now waiting what the fuck? <laughs> because they're they're anticipating him being uh, pardoned tomorrow. Yeah, what the holy hell? shit! Oh, yeah, yeah, Tiger King might be out, <laughs> bro. That's wild. Oh, no. yeah, I ain't gonna damn. lie. I ain't gonna lie. 
I ain't, I ain't, first, I ain't gonna lie, I was disappointed in Wayne doing that, doing that fuck shit for Trump, you know what I'm saying, by trying to support him and shit, I ain't gonna lie, I thought that, that was weak because I felt like it was for a whole nother reason. I felt like, you know, <laughs> at, we all know it could have been a money grab, you know what I'm saying, my opinion, or better yet, Wayne does have some legal issues. Yeah. So maybe yeah. Wayne was thinking like, yo, let me get all the Brady let me, can. Yeah, let me get let me get cool with this cat. Cause I gotta yeah. think like Wayne, even though personally I did feel a way, I gotta think like Wayne though. You know what I'm saying? And uh so I ain't gonna lie, I'm kinda cool with Wayne being pardoned if that's gonna happen because I want a car to six. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You yeah, know, yeah, that shit. ain't gonna happen. If though. he gets pardoned, though, I bet you he's gonna regret selling his masters like that. Oh yeah, I seen that, that shit, bro. That he, shit. he sold like everybody's masters. Nicky's yep. everybody's. And he, he, I thought he still had a nah, young he, money shit. No, nah, he sold I, the young money imprint for like what three hundred million or something like that. Well, I thought it was just his music. A hundred. No, 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 no. It was a hundred million, which is worse. Yeah. Because no, it was the young money. Um, yeah, young I money it was imprint. Just his music. No, sir. Dog, that's fucking crazy. Well, I, I, I can't wait to I see mean, come. Shit. Whatever. I can't wait to see man. to see him come tomorrow morning, man. He he's out of here, man, because he definitely caused a lot of ruckus in 2020. Some ruckus that actually Hoffa actually covered in his music. You know what I'm saying? And it was super dope. Uh, one thing that stood <clears> out <throat> to me this year from Hoffa or last year at that is that he was able to cover a lot of things that happened last year in 2020 with a song called Rebellious. Mm -hmm. yep, like, yep. and that's why I kind of wanted to start off with just talking about Trump and his last day because not only is it that. But we got a man here that literally got on a track and said, fuck Trump, and spoke more into that, bro. Like, how did 2020 affect you, dog, with the shit you were seeing on your timeline, man? Because you talked a lot about it on Rebellious. Yeah, and what's crazy is it I didn't even mean to start it off like that. I, I didn't know where where I was going with that track, what yeah. direction I was taking. I just I just went. It just took off. And uh, I went and dropped the first verse, and then I went back like two days later and dropped the second verse. And George was like, Man, I didn't think you were gonna be able to top that first verse, but yeah. that second ver second verse you murked that motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know. It really didn't affect me too much. Yeah, as mostly nothing does that goes on with the higher ups. Yeah, you know. But um, where it hurt me the most, where I was telling him earlier, uh, was work. Yeah, you know, I was out of work. So oh shit! That gave me time to sit down and see everything that was going on because usually I don't even pay attention to that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I'm right there. All I'm doing is scrolling, listening to music, writing music, recording. I mean, yeah. But that that's all I that's all I'm able to see. Bro, you were able to capture that so perfect though, man. Because you know, I felt like the way you were the 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 the, the place you put yourself in, man. When you were even speaking on BLM and you're just like, "Yo, motherfuckers <coughs> want to know which side I'm on." Yo, just know. I'm going to be right there shooting at, uh, sh shooting with BLM at the government. You know what I'm saying? If it has to come down to that, I'm with BLM on this, bro. And, like, I ain't going to lie, man. Like, that shit was super cool to hear. You know what I'm saying? Especially, like, you know, coming from your perspective and, and coming from a dude that, you know, I guess you would say, like, you know, when it comes from, like, sh the, sh like the street cats, you know what I'm saying? To me, it, it, it just brings something else, man. It just brings, like, like a, a certain realness that comes out of it. You know what I'm saying? So it was just super cool to see, man. And then you spoke on Vanessa again and all these other things that were going on, bro. And one thing that was interesting you touched on that I have yet to hear a rapper touch on, which is pretty crazy. You touched on like the the like I think like the higher ups like fucking with the kids and shit. Yeah, yeah. I have yet to hear a rapper talk about like the whole Pizzagate thing and all that other shit. Well, it's hard, yeah, to, yeah, it's hard yeah. to find a word that rhymes with molest. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, not really. Not really. Best chess <laughs> west. Yes, that, uh, oh, word I'm, I'm that makes sense. I'm not a rapper, guys. <laughs> same, same. But yeah, bro. Like, and and the way you captured it, man, it just literally like it, it solidified like 2020, bro. And I thought that was super dope. Did the hook come first when you were making that, or did the verses come first? Nah, the first verse came first, and yeah. then uh, second verse, and then I made the hook. Oh, and that's usually how it happens. Yeah, I just go off of what I'm talking about in the song, then I make the hook. How long? That, how long a song like that takes to make? Uh, it took me like. Cause you said you don't write anything either. No. Yeah. No, it took me. About, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Whoa. What? I understand you had said you don't write, uh -huh. but you didn't write that specific song. I haven't wrote nothing since uh, Interlude, and uh, that's the one where uh, the video I got where I'm in the woods and shit. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't wrote nothing since that. Interlude. That's that's the one where and you have the We Are Strong sample. Yeah, yeah. That's uh probably about four years back. Yeah. Four. Yeah, about four years back. Wow. God Everything damn. else I just kind of memorized. 
where do you get the inspiration from like that? Like, is it certain artists that you listen to growing up that probably like give mm-hmm. that? Because to me, like whenever I hear you go off, like especially when it seems like since you say you don't write, so you definitely go off of feelings and emotions. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I think if I was to guess your top five, I would throw DMX in there. I would throw Pac in there. I would throw Scarface, rappers of that of, of that caliber. I say you know, Chameleon now. Chameleon there? Why is that? Sound like him. Oh, shit. Yeah, you think so? I do. That's the first time I heard I that do. shit. I do. You like the rap scheme, mm-hmm. the voice. Yo, I never it looked at it that way. You do? Me neither. Oh, shit. I, when I was listening to the album, I was like, I'm getting that. That Paul Wall chameleon there vibe. Kind of. Now that I think and about then, it. And then Rebellious, even though probably the message was about the same, the track he had with uh, Chameleon, the track he had with uh, uh, Slick Rick. Um, what's the name of it? Hip Hop Police. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Even yeah, though it yeah. was kind of, so you know. So much drama in the industry. Yeah, it was yeah. supposed to be on the comical side, if you will, but it sort of like the I same mean, message. I mean, it's always a half Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to have So, yeah, that's sometimes. what it put me in that. I was like, yeah, I, I kind of get that vibe. Nah, but my top five, it's hard to name, man. It's just so many artists out there. But DMX would have to be one of them. You got that right. Uh, Eminem, for sure. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Um, Zero, for sure. Uh, happy birthday, Ro. Yeah, happy oh, yeah, birthday, Ro. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, Ro. 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 the Vandress. Mm, Tupac. I, I can't even say that. I can't even say that. So good. I appreciate you keeping it real because usually, thank you. Usually, thank you. No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine because usually you get the artists who who man, Pac, may man, just shit, give a man. courtesy to Pac in their top five yeah, just yeah. to please other people. So I appreciate you being honest. Nah, about nah, that. nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Never that. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's hard. It's, I mean, street military, all the H Town artists, really. Everybody that you named in in the um, I think it was the outro track. Yeah. Everybody yeah. that you named in there. Yeah. Bro, that much. shit was so hard when you fucking like uh I think you're just like I'm more K Reno, Street Military, like all that other shit, like the violence. Like I was like, bro, this, <laughs> I was like, God yeah, damn. Yeah, George was like, you snapped on that motherfucker. It kind of reminds me of like the way Pharaoh used to hop on tracks. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was just Yeah, super just hard, to take man. it. Just to take it. I just like you said, I go off emotions, you know. So yeah. I'm real passionate when I'm rapping because I, I got a lot of shit on my chest or I got a lot of shit in my head that I need to get out. Yeah. So it has to come out, and it comes out however I'm feeling, and I write whatever I write on um, based on how I'm feeling. The heart bleed. That's it, man. That fucking <laughs> yeah, that, that poem. Yeah, yeah. That shit was dope. Yo, yeah. yo, that brings me to something. And by the <laughs> way, guys, real quick, we're talking about his album Angel Twelve Eleven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know sir. what I'm saying? That's out now. Yep. Um, Everywhere. super dope album. Everywhere. All platforms. Yes, super sir. dope album, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. Like going into it. I was like, all right, let's go ahead and play it and let's see what it is. I didn't necessarily think I was gonna get out of it. I was like, bro, this is one of the, one of the probably best albums that well, it came out in 2020 though, huh? Yeah. This is probably one of the best local albums that I heard in 2020, and I was like, bro, this is super hard. Like, this is this is dope. Like, we got to <laughs> get them in here. And so you start the album off with uh with a uh, heartbleed, and I'm curious, was that written while you were locked up? Yeah. Because you, you mentioned that doing, you know what I'm saying, as you go into the track, I think the first few bars you talk about, you know what I'm saying, being locked up, being in a cell or whatever. Mm-hmm. Was that written in there? Yeah, I wrote that in 2009 when I was in state jail. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah, 2009. Um, I had been telling my cousin that I had wanted to put it on something, and this was the project that I found worthy of it. Okay. God, now, man, that's crazy. And it lived, what, 10, 10 years later? Yeah. 11 years later, you put it on wax? Yo. Bro, that's crazy. How'd y'all, uh, how'd, y'all, how'd y'all manage to get the sounds? Because it damn near sounded like you recorded it in there. Nah, actually, <laughs> a lot of people say that. We worked out awesome. I thought you pulled an SPM on us. You know nah, what I'm saying? Like you nah, recorded it worked, that. It worked out perfect <laughs> because everyone says it sounds like that, but I, it's actually uh, sounds from a parking garage. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was that something that y'all recorded like on y'all's own, or is that something that y'all found on YouTube nah, and just y'all threw YouTube, it on there? Just, yeah, we just do a parking garage sounds because, I mean, fucking giving something away here. My bad, George. Uh, when I'm doing playing around video, which is the second track, yeah, 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 I'm gonna start it still with the heart bleeds, and I'm gonna be in a parking garage saying it oh, on, on the beginning of the video when it's in the lead into playing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's super dope, and. Your rhyme scheme on there is just super crazy, and the way yeah, that you works. put it together is super, super poetic. Man, you, you know what's crazy is uh, some fool I was locked up with, you know, from New Orleans, obviously. Yeah, um, shout out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shout boot. out, you know. Shout out, the uh, boot. 
he came and showed me this song because I was like the radio of the dorm. Yeah. I was in the very corner bunk and they'd be requesting shit for me to say that I, I, I was saying the night before or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? And shit. They'd be like, hey, do that one you did last night, whoop de woo, blah, blah, blah. So this fool comes up to me, shows me something he wrote, and it, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. Like, I was like, God damn. So I was like, it motivated me to write that right there. And I, I came and showed him the next day. I was like, all right, look what I got, though. <laughs> yeah, one, huh? yeah, yeah. And he was like, bro. He was like, man. He was like, when you get out, you're going to have to like try to search up Eminem or something to sign with that fool because, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was like, yeah. That's yeah. dope, man. And you took it and you ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm curious, though, man. You were able to make a track during that time, or you were able to write during that time period. Like, I hear people like Pac, right, who said, and Pac, you know, a lot of people put him top fives, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people put him up there. But someone like Pac, when he was locked up, he did an interview and he said, he said, yo, people think that I'm in here writing this, writing that, and I'm just out here just grinding while I'm in here, you know what I'm saying? And when I come out, I'm going to have all this music, which he ended up still having because Dre had right. the production ready. Fucking but anyways, he was, he, was like, he was like, they think I'm, I'm writing in here. He's like, but prison kills your spirit. Prison yeah. kills your spirit. So when I heard the first track and I knew I, I had an idea that he wrote it in a certain time period of his life, I was like, bro, how is he able to pull that off? Because I know if I if I was locked up, bro, I'd probably my spirit would probably be killed too. Fucking COVID killed my spirit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being locked in. You know what I'm saying? It killed my spirit. So like, how were you able to still manage to like express yourself in those times, bro? Like such well, a rough I mean, ass period. I mean, at that time it wasn't that rough to me. I mean, because of who I was at that time. Yeah. It's like I was built for that shit. I knew okay. it was coming eventually. You know, it's like my uncle told me one time, and he was a crazy motherfucker from the streets too. He said, uh, going to jail is like graduating. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. ain't nothing, you know? You'll be out, you'll be back out here with that's more crazy. stripes on your shoulder, which is stupid as fuck. Don't listen to that shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's just how it was at the time for me. You know, that's just who I was. Yeah. And... You know, you hear everybody in that motherfucker talking about, I ain't coming back to this bitch. I'll tell him, man, I'm going to be real with you. I'll probably be back in this motherfucker. Yeah. But then uh, one of my best friends got killed when I was in there. And oh, man. I, I, I ain't been back since. <laughs> yeah. Um, You know, not to necessarily get too personal, but outside of just, you know, your friend passing away, which definitely <laughs> impacted you to, you know, I want to say make a change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, out, outside of that, is there any lessons that you did pick up while while locked up that you take with you to this day, maybe, or anything like that? Uh, I learned how to make meth. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! That he doesn't. He doesn't do. He's not Hoffa. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. not Hoffa. He's Mr. White. Yeah, <laughs> Walter White. <laughs> yeah. Yo, nah, I mean, um, I don't know, man. I mean, you talk to a lot of people when you're in there. You get to know a lot of people. You hear a lot of stories. A lot of them are bullshit, but... Any OGs well, put you on I to mean, some life shit, like, like you know, for you to go out and, you know what I'm saying, do something positive or whatever? Not really, because when I was in there, I wasn't one of them hardhead knuckleheads in there fucking up. Yeah. I stayed to myself. They kind of treated me like an old school, you know what I'm saying? I would oh, okay. just... I stayed to myself. They know who to fuck with and who don't. They know, like, oh, he just here. He just doing his time. Don't fuck with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He stayed to himself, you know, hold his own, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, so, I mean, really no one put me on game when I was in there about anything because I knew most of it already. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, man, how long were you in there? I wasn't in there long. I did uh, seven months the last time I was in state jail. But okay. then I've been locked up numerous of times before, oh, okay. a couple months here, a couple months there. No long stretches, though. Oh, okay. Well, shit. You you became a master chef, though, man. Because every time I see you, <laughs> every time I see you online, bro, you always going in with the cooking and shit, man. Real yeah, food. Yeah. I'm assuming real food. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. He ain't flicking no wrist. Yeah, no. When he he goes on he goes on Facebook Live, right? And he'll okay. be like whipping up breakfast for his family and whatnot. And he'll be so, like yeah. jamming Spanish music in the background. Hmm. But y'all ain't gonna lie, I've, I've been doing that lately too, man. That shit feels good, bro. Like just cooking and just jamming in the mornings, man. It takes you back to a certain it, it be, time period. It be all kinds of music, though. I mean. You you hear all kinds of stuff playing my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, but I I just, I just remember this one time hopping on your live, bro, and, and you're just like, yeah, man, this reminds me of back when I was a kid, man, and yeah, my, yeah. my mom, my tias, all them going in, you know what I'm saying, Spanish music in the background. But 
what I wanted to say, man, is that I seen pictures on your Facebook, man, and you will and you be going in on like spreads and whatnot. Like you be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I, I get down on spreads too, shit. bro. That... I still make the motherfuckers every now and then. <laughs> Dog, man, I'm My curious. Kids love them. I'm curious, bro. I I haven't had the 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 best success at it. You know what I'm saying? Like I have some kin folks, so I have like you know what I'm saying. You know, just family members that, that have been locked up, you know what I'm saying? And they're yeah, like yeah. master chefs when it comes to spreads, bro. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I'm curious. What's 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 the best recipe for a spread that you would probably throw out there for someone to take? Uh, or what are you throwing in there? Uh, of course, the noodles. You know? Yeah, I would definitely say noodles. <laughs> of course, the noodles. Uh, some chili, some cheese, some summer sausage, some tuna, some jalapenos. Chips. This man going in right now. Uh, <laughs> I just made a lot of motherfuckers hungry on the coop. Uh, yeah, my my bro, he, my bro, he love when I make the tuna spreads. Gotta get down on them bitches too. But uh, it all depends what's in the motherfucking cabinets. Yeah, because <laughs> I was literally I was on his Facebook, bro, and I was like just going through his gallery, man, because I I, I like to make sure I know my shit. You know what I'm saying? As far as uh artists, like, cause you know. I met you probably what, like a year ago or so? Yeah, at the mixer. Yeah, I, yeah, I met yeah, you at a yeah. mixer, man. And like, um, and so, you know, I've only known you since that time period. So I'm just like, you know what, let me go look up like early work of Hoff or, or whatever yeah. I could find, you know what I'm saying? And and I came across a lot of pictures of of, of, of spreads on foils and shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, damn, this man be going in. And he was like super proud of his work. Hell yeah. I was like, God damn, I'm like, you know it's what you spread. should do, man? <laughs> you know what you should do? You should yes, make sir. you should make like a cookbook, bro. Like yeah. I seen a who was it, man? Prodigy. He he, he need to have a spread competition. Yeah. There you go. Spread they should have those, man. Like yeah, a spread yeah. Olympics. <laughs> I feel I feel like this is gonna be taken out of context. So I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and y'all weird motherfuckers. We talking about the noodles and shit, bro. Like the hood motherfuckers know what we mean when noodles we talking about noodles. Yeah, we we talking about spreads, bro. Hey, if they if they're watching this because of me, they know what the fuck we're okay, talking about. Okay, y'all know what it is, man. Yo, and if you hey, were... you, you see that TikTok of old buddy, uh, he took the the burner, like the Bunsen burner from the from the kitchen, and in, 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 when he's locked up, it was broken. So they get you know they just took it. And he plugged that hoe in, and he puts it underneath his bed, and takes off the mattress and everything, and cooks on that hoe. Nah, nah. I didn't see that. That's oh, crazy. Man. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw and it was real. Yeah, I've yeah. been learning a lot of shit from TikTok. Yes, yeah, so not the dances, but a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the some, eventful some, shit. Oh, good. Let me find out you were doing the busted challenge. You got me fucked up. Let me find out, dog. Doing no damn busted challenge. <laughs> Yo, you a wild man, bro. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. It's yeah, all good, man. It's best you don't know. You're fine. It's you're best fine. you don't know. It's all right. You good, bro. You good, man. <laughs> I know TikTok, but I don't be honest. Do you have a TikTok? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. Oh, man, I don't have one either. I don't fuck with we it. We were talking about it on the way up here, and the only reason why I'm interested in getting a TikTok is because uh, I see, like, people cooking, and they have recipes and shit. Uh-huh. And I don't know if you ever seen those Facebook videos where people, like, go in and they give you, like, it's like a minute video, and, like, people will give you each step in every recipe. It'll be real fast or whatever. And TikTok has a lot of those. So I was like, I'm yeah, interested yeah, in yeah. doing that. But they have a lot of dances it's and shit on It's called Pinterest. There, you can yeah. just download Pinterest. <laughs> Yeah, man. But anyways, man. Uh, yeah. So I think it's, I think it's pretty cool, man. I think you should definitely look into that because uh, Prodigy uh, from Mob Deep yeah, he put yeah. he put out a he put out a, a whole book, a whole cookbook on like when you're locked up. Like this is this is how this is how you can oh, real, be a real chef. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nah, and it's really dope. Like it made a like he. It was a successful book. It was a serious book, too. It wasn't no jokes or anything like that. Like, of course, yeah, there's a little bit of play with it. And when he does interviews and shit, like, for real, like, you really did this. But nah, like, he really did do that, bro. Like, this shit's tight, man. Wow. Yeah, man. But anyways, man, you had, uh, you had mentioned um, you had mentioned DMX. And the reason why I brought up X is because when, we had the, uh, when they had the versus battle of Snoop versus X, you were quick to get in my comments. You were the first person to comment. And you're like, I got X immediately. That. That's the only one I've seen. It, like you said that like immediately, bro. And like, what's crazy is that that actually reminded me, bro. Like of this one track you have, bro. Oh, fucking uh, it's a song called "Stay Strong," and in the hook, it reminded me of X a lot, man. Like to me, and you immediately had commented, you're like, bro, X just speaks to me more. You know what I'm saying? And I hear it even when you do the poems and all that shit, man. Yeah. What's your favorite X album? Uh, that's hard. A lot of it's it's okay to say what everybody else says, which is it's dark and hell is hot. That's the one with uh fucking uh I think Damien's on there. The first Damien, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I like. 
I can see why because there's times where you'll you'll play with your personalities. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll you'll go from Joe to Hoffa. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't like playing with them. They just play with me. Oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's wild, man. And say what he say. Dog, I see a, I see a lot of that shit the way that you that you that you play between like Joe and Hoffa and, and just like split personality <laughs> shit or whatever of who who is Joe? Yeah. And then who, who is Hoffa? Who is How do you separate the two? Uh it's hard. I can't separate the two. That's why they're still there until <laughs> they become one. <laughs> if you could describe if you could describe who Joe is, who who would you say Joe is? Joe is who if you remember me from Didi Middle school. What? Oh, okay. If someone remembers me from DD Middle School, that's Joe. Half has been who I've been since after that. Oh shit! When I well, started fucking up, I guess. All you viewers who know him from DD, <laughs> yeah. uh, comment and let us know who Joe is. Yeah, man, <laughs> please. We do have a few comments. What, what they got, talking what about? Uh, Gregory Campos says that's all facts. My boy is a mastermind. Hmm. I tell him every time. Yo, shout out oh, to him. To Who is that? He's trying to yeah, rap. Yeah. That is Gregory Campos. <laughs> shout out to Gregory. And then there's a uh, Jorge says music corruption. Hoffa. Uh-huh. Hoffa. <laughs> Yo, that was funny when you did that on the track because you're like, had to do it to him, George. George. <laughs> huh? It, it was George, not Jorge. I apologize. Right. Okay. <laughs> tomato, tomato. I, I was gonna call him. I was gonna call him Jorge until I like until I listened to his album a few times. I was like, oh wait, George is Jorge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I read it off of his Facebook, you know what I'm saying, name, and it's Jorge. So I was like, Jorge, you know. But I was going to, I was still going to call him George when I see him. I didn't want to be weird or whatever, especially with my pronouncing and shit. But, anyways, man, yeah, you play, you play with, with Joe and Hoffa. Oh, yeah. D- D- Desiree Garcia said, y'all two do sound alike. Oh, you're talking about real and. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do. On that, on that particular track, they did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, that's, yeah. That's family for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's you not on everything. It's not on everything. It's the deep voice. As it, as it. Fucking, uh, now I'm curious, man. Since, since I guess you had more time with Hoffa in your life, man. Who is Hoffa? Who would you say is Hoffa? Um, Hoffa is the mastermind of everything that I do. I mean, I would say Hoffa is the stronger one right now. Oh, okay. Dominant. Yeah, the dominant one right now because, uh, for a long time, I should have been farther than where I'm at right now, I think. So in the rap game, but that nigga Joe was bullshitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of people would say that my good side is Joe, my bad side is Hoffa. Your to good side it, is to, Joe. To, to, to answer it more simple. Okay. But it's, it's crazy because it's like it's bittersweet because it's like you say that your bad side is Hoffa, but Hoffa got you to this point. Hoffa is the reason why we're talking to you right now. Hoffa's the one that's putting out the music. So it's like it's bittersweet. It's like you want to say that's bad, but at the same time, like there's some – there's some good to it, you know what I'm saying? Like you're you're putting out content, you're putting out music, and you're super creative with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I ain't saying it's all bad, but yeah. it ain't all good either. Well, yeah, it's a balance. Man, you gotta have balance. So yeah, I feel you, man. And you play with that with your with your album cover, man. I see that there's like two sides. You got like you got the uh, the red side, blue side. I, I'll take it symbolizes like you know good and evil, whatever. Yeah, yeah. However yeah. you want to take it. And on my way up here, well, before I came up here. I actually searched up because I, I try to understand what Angel Twelve Eleven necessarily meant. You know, um, I didn't I didn't know too much, and I was like, ah, I was like, I'm gonna try to find it in the album somewhere and try to see if I can get it. And uh, after after the listens, I got I got who Hoffa is. I got I got who Joe Hoffa is. You know what I'm saying? But I was still trying to find out Angel Twelve Eleven. So I went ahead and did my research, and like I found out that you know it, it was a uh, it's a uh, let me read right here. It's a uh, for new things and pot of, it's it's a uh, it's a time for new things and positive vibrations, and it also is a number that reminds you of your talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know any of this. Is this like in the Bible or somewhere? Or? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I learned about uh, angel numbers a while back. Yeah, and I always looked them up. You know, uh, numbers I see all the time. Like I always see three thirty four. I mean, three forty three all the time. Yeah, you know, like on the clock, just. Addresses. I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying I would see it all the time, so I would look that up. Uh, 1211 has been a number that's been in my life for a long time, so uh, I looked that up and I seen that, and I was like, I'm gonna call my album that. Oh shit, man, that's crazy because you actually dissect a lot of that meaning throughout the album, and like I said, I didn't know what Angel 1211 was, so after I heard the album, and then I go look up the definition, and then I go back to the album again. I was like, oh, okay. Like there, there's, there's, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel with this, especially with how you end your album. 
You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was actually a really fitting title for that. You know what I'm saying? I, I would have never known like angel numbers or, or how that even exists. I thought it was like a Bible term or yeah, something. I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to go do my research on it. Just yeah, look at it. I, I've got a question. Yeah, you you said that before you were Hoffa, you know, you were Joe. At what point did you need or, or manifest Hoffa? Like 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 what what was the point where you had to turn the the corner? Well, Hoffa came about by my cousin. He started <laughs> calling me that because I always came up missing. Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just ran with that. I started using that as my rap name because before that, I just used uh, Jolo, which was what my grandma called me. Yeah. You know, so that's what I used before shout out to I grandma. started. Yeah, shout out to grandma. Love you, grandma. Love. Um, then uh, Hoffa took place, and as soon as he started calling me that is around the time I got involved in the streets. Yeah. So it kind of like just <laughs> so like, that so then that name ended up fitting like the 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 Jimmy Hoffa like who I was like becoming I guess I'm yeah. cu- I'm curious man I didn't know who Jimmy Hoffa was until uh, I heard his name around but I don't know was that dude necessarily like a bad I think it was like a mystery about him if he was like a bad dude or not I know like he was in the Irishman or some shit like that I, that's well, he I was f- the president of the Teamsters Union. What, what was that? And uh, supposedly he had ties with the mafia that was helping him with his yeah. business. I knew it was this, mob so. related or yeah, some shit. Yeah, and uh, they that's who they think killed him, made him disappear or whatever. Who? The mob. Oh shit! And yeah. the Irishman, they say that they put him like just put him straight up in a, in a meat grinder, and mm-hmm. that was that. You know, I, I thought in the Irishman they shot him or some shit. No, no, they shoot him, but like to make his body disappear. You know? Oh yeah. god! You just yeah. <laughs> damn. That's why you can't find the man. Yeah. Half. That's <laughs> shit. I didn't expect that to be. It. I, you I know, asked, they, they told. Yeah, I knew he was mob related and yeah. shit, but I forgot how the mob gets down. Yeah. Oh shit. So, <laughs> so, so it's crazy, man. Because so, so the name originally had no street intention at all at first, and then afterwards, like just after stuck. a while, just kind of just yeah, it just that's who I was, that's yeah. who I became, that's who I am now. Yeah. So, so that's not even just a rap name. That's something that you were already like accustomed to getting told in the streets and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh shit. That's what's up, man. And that was what your cousin, wasn't it? Yeah, my cousin John G. Shout out to John G. Shout out to John G, man. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Yo, man, so... That guy's a gangster. His real name is Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. So, what you call it? Uh, so, I was curious, man. Whenever you get on, like, tracks like Tired of Losing, it's it's so crazy hearing it because you... When I, when I first heard it, I wasn't... How can I say this? I was I was I was really really like entertained by the fact that the way that you got on the hook was so melodic and I was like, "Bro, like this although you can put Hoffa in different playlists, I'm like now listening to the album, I'm like, "Yo, you can put him now in a Kevin Gates playlist. You can put him now in like a in a playlist that, you know, like an NBA Youngboy and all that just because off your melodic hook alone." And I was like, "Okay, this dude is like diverse with it. He's like he's very Everywhere with it, you know what I'm saying? And it was super dope to hear, man, like, that you could be able to do that. When you hear new beats and whatnot, because like I said, I earlier in the, in the episode, I compared you to the likes of ABN and Street Military. Although those are, I'm naming them, naming acts that are from an older time period. Like, bro, like, you can be able to hop on these modern day beats. Like I hear in like Tired of Losing and, and, uh, and your second track and things of that nature. And you definitely fit within Nashville. those type of beats and come out still doing you without having to what's the word conform conform is that the word conform to to what is accustomed to hearing on that man you know when you when you pick out your beats or whatever do that come to your mind like okay let me hear something that's popping out there and do my thing to it mm, not necessarily no well not really at all i mean i just go through beats Find different producers. I'll search their beats, uh, SoundClick or uh, YouTube or whatever, and uh, I'll just go through beats and I'll freestyle to one for a little bit. And I ain't feeling it. Go to another one. And I ain't feeling it. Go to another one. And I ain't feeling it. And I'll just freestyle until I come up with my first two bars that I really like that I want to start with. Yeah. And then I just run from there. I oh, mean, shit. like, uh, it's funny that you say that because like. George has wanted me to get on more beats like that. Yeah. You know, more modern beats, but still do me. And I was like, well, that's all I know how to do. Yeah. Because you know, even when he shows me other people's beats, I ain't even ever heard the song before because I don't really listen to other yeah. people's music. You know, like, I, I heard DMX again. 
I heard him telling the artist one time in the studio, he was like saying something about listening to other artists and not doing it. Don't listen to other artists because then you kind of take something from them. Yep. Not even knowing it though. Oh no, you do. Yeah, you, you do. take something from <laughs> yeah. them. So it's taken away from you. Yeah. So I kind of ran with that. You know, I, I hardly ever listen to music. And when I do, you know, I throw some artists out there. Uh, uh, Joyner Lucas. Yeah. yeah. Fucks with him. You know, uh, uh, NF. Oh, you're talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it that white dude? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck with him. Uh, of course, uh, uh, fucking uh, Mac Miller. Happy oh, birthday. Man. Happy birthday and rest yeah, in peace, rest man. Rest in peace, man. God, yeah, I, fuck with Mac. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have expected off of your content. For you to list the names that you're that you're naming right now, yeah. man, like you throwing NF out there, I'm just like, bro, oh, like shit. this dude is he far be, from. He became one of my favorite lyricists. Oh, oh, I see why you admire people like that. Then you're admire you're admiring the the lyricism and, and how yes. they're putting it out and how yes. they're doing it and how they're performing on the track. Oh shit, man, that's crazy. Yeah, like I, and I and I hear that like even when like earlier you mentioned Eminem and, yeah, and yeah. whatnot. I can hear sometimes when you'll. When you'll um and don't take this the wrong way, but you'll pre- you'll you'll get on the mic and and you'll definitely put the character on there. You know what I'm saying? With nah, certain, nah, what you talking about? What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Awful. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm trembling. <laughs> <laughs> Just do him, yeah. bro. Yo, I'm scared. Nah, man. Nah, man. But like, whenever like you you uh whenever you do shit like that, man. Like I hear like the the character and another 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 inspiration that i gotta say man because you have eminem and then you got slim shady you got marshall mathers and you got eminem slim shady you know what i'm saying all that other shit bro uh, nf is on the same shit too he is yeah yeah he i got, probably he heard like to, one song he i'm not gonna a, lie he got a lot of songs like that too like all to ego you gotta put me on man because i heard like one song oh, yeah go check him out yeah, I don't one know of my who he is. He got some shit one of my homeboys he wanted me he was just like bro he's like you gotta go to this concert i'm like I'm like, all right, who is it? And he, I think he said like Logic NF. I was at that concert for real. Yeah, was it was it at uh, what's what's that spot? Uh, Miller that? Miller Outdoor Theater. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah that I was joint. at that concert. Yeah, man, he he had, he had told me he was like, bro, if I go and I buy you a ticket, are you down? And he named the people, and I was like, I'll go see Logic. I was like, I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> and then like, I, I, you gonna he, leave after Logic? <laughs> he, well, Logic was the headliner. I yeah, believe. he was the oh, headliner. Okay. And like, and and he was just talking about. He was just like, yo, uh, he was like, nah, I really want to see this artist named NF that's opening for Logic. And he sent me a song, and I ain't gonna lie, maybe he sent me the wrong song, you know. <laughs> but like, I get it. His the dude, he can Parker. rap. He can rap. He can really rap. You know what I'm saying? He can rap. He can get down. But I think, how, how can I say this? I have. I have an issue. This is gonna sound so crazy. I have an issue with like over inspirational music, and oh, what yeah, I yeah. like when it's just like you gotta <laughs> believe in yourself. You gotta do this. Da, da, da. I came from this. I did this. I did that. And then you have this big ass hook with this with this Skylar Gray type girl that be on Eminem tracks, and it's just like this big ass inspirational song. And I'm just like, I get it, bro. <laughs> be happy. Just, you know, like <laughs> you know, I get it. You know, it's coming off kind of like it was packaged together, like by by your record label, or whatever. <laughs> uh, but that was just one song, so I gotta you give gotta him know, another you, try. You gotta know how to do yeah, those. Yeah. Type I gotta of give him though. another try. I gotta give him another try. You gotta, you gotta know how to, you know, release those type of tracks or make those type of tracks. Yeah, because that's yeah. how it was with. That's how some people. Uh, I think they accepted it more just because of his death. What Nipsey Hussle and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, John Legend. John Legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get it. I get what you're saying, but people accepting that one more. That type. Yeah, man. That type of track. It, it's hard for me to get into those, man. I think when uh. What's funny, I think, oh, man, I probably shouldn't say this, but I love Eminem, guys. I love Eminem. I'm not afraid. <laughs> no, right. you don't, because you said you don't like that song I just said. No, no, I love Not Afraid. It's no, what don't. came after that. <laughs> it's when he ran with that type of vibe. And, like, after we got Love the Way You Lie, and then we got, like, basically Love the Way You Lie repeated, like, ten more times with the following <laughs> albums after that. You're on and I was Eminem like, oh, hits bruh. List, man. You're on his hit list. I, I hope not, man. man I fucking love Eminem. <laughs> I, I don't want that smoke. I'm good. I know what he can do. It's just... But shit, at the same time, Eminem put out a Lose Yourself. And I, I, let me tell you, we're talking about inspirational music. That that hoe is nice. It's not Lose. overboard. And I can guarantee you it's inspired more people than... Yeah. No offense, NF. You know, but like that one track you were talking about, I bet you more people have been inspired by Lose Yourself. It's subtle. True enough. It's subtle. Oh, yeah. We talked about it last time. Man, Fucking was, Lose Yourself. It's a huge impact, though. Yeah, I did. 
Yeah. Fuck it. I got my notebook out instantly and started writing music. Talking about to lose yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I remember uh, we were talking about on, on the last episode, man. When it comes to the songs like Lose Yourself, well, the song Lose Yourself, I uh, I remember that song used to play every time I had something epic that was about to go down. So if I was, <laughs> so, so was going to talk to a girl... Like the song "Lose Yourself" will play, <laughs> the beat will start playing. Damn, she's fine. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I would start walking, and I'm like, it's playing in my head. It's like this is your chance, one shot, one opportunity. His palms are sweaty. Which, yeah, that's what you should be listening Bro. to when you're about to talk to a chick. Is Eminem? Yeah. Shit. his great relationship right. past. Shit, that's what I was listening to on my way up here to, to interview Hoffa. I was like, this is your one chance, palms are sweaty. <laughs> I'm just you bullshitting, ch- man. Nah, but uh, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, shit like that, bro. Like that's super dope, man. I would have never known. And you even, you know, happy birthday, Mac Miller. You know what I'm saying? I would I wouldn't have known that either. So that's super dope that you look up to that. And I think you, what I take it that you look up to the lyricism. Of course, the content is super different from yours. You know what I'm what saying? A, a Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, nah, I fucks with his content. I mean, everything about his music. Yeah, the whole vibe, everything. Well, no, no, no. What I mean by that is like you fuck with the music. I'm talking about. You don't get like what, inspired yeah. to do your shit off of the content that he makes because oh, your content nah. is totally yeah, yeah, separate. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I'm curious, bro. Like, uh, since we're since uh we're going into the album, um, there's a track on there that I related to a lot, bro. Like, I once I heard this one line, it got me because I suffer from the same shit. And you don't have to go too personal if you don't want to. That's fine. But when I heard, I wish I knew. You mentioned uh, some of some of your troubles that, that that really really bother you as far as mental health uh, personally, and you mentioned having your first anxiety attack at eighteen, bro. Eighteen years old on my birthday. Do you, if you can, is there you know if you can if you want to recall that experience you had? Uh, man, it was my birthday. I had been partying all night. <laughs> <laughs> I had been partying all oh, night. Well, my birthday is New Year's, so New oh. Year's Eve. New Year's, oh, Eve. Shit. Yeah. New Year's Eve, I was partying all night. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know it's like a couple it. weeks now. But <laughs> my bad. But. Appreciate it. Uh, I got up early. I went to sleep late, got up early, hit my boy up. Like, hey, come pick me up. I got some, I got some something to smoke. You know what I'm saying? So we hit the freeway, hit 45 South. As soon as we get by Edgebrook, I start feeling funny. Man, I don't feel right. I don't feel right. Thinking maybe it's just hangover type shit or whatever. I go to the store. I tell them to stop at the store. I'm thinking I need some water. I get in there. I get the water. My hands start shaking and everything. Oh, I start man. feeling like all sweaty and clammy. And I'm just like, hurry up, hurry up. I'm trying to pay. I was like, here, I just threw them $5. And I walked out the store and started drinking the water and yeah. spilling it all myself. My hands are shaking. I jump Bruh. in the car. I'm like, take me home, take me home, take me home. <laughs> And then, like, I jumped in the ride, and he's hauling ass, but it's making me more tripped out. Like, my heart's racing. I feel like jumping out the car like I need to get out. Yeah. And he's, uh, I, I almost did, too, but not on the freeway, though. But when we were <laughs> by my house, I wanted to run home. Yeah. <laughs> I got home, well, to my mom's house. Yeah. I got to my mom's house. I went in there, opened the door, and I just went to the bed, and I just laid down on it. And I'm just like, she's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, man, I don't feel good. And she was like, well, you just got a hangover. It's like, nah, nah, this ain't no hangover. I've had a hangover before. Yeah. And by this time, I'm having a full-blown panic attack already, though. My hands start cramping up. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Hyperventilating. And then I'm just right there, and she just, like, you know, right there with me, just looking at me like, you're all right, you're all right, because she's had them, too. Yeah. She's had anxiety attacks. So, oh, man. You know, um, she was just like, you're all right. She yeah, had to drink, just calm drink, you down. Drink. Yeah, calm me down a little bit. And finally, I was able to drink something because I felt like I was choking myself when I would try to drink something. Oh, man. You know, I and, know uh, the feeling. Yeah, so uh, she gave me uh, mineral water. First time I ever tasted mineral water. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what the hell mineral water is. I just take a drink, and I'm like, what the fuck yeah. was that? Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of threw me off balance, though. It yeah. made me forget about my anxiety for that split second. Yeah. Well, why is this water so heavy? <laughs> and then it, it, I instantly like kind of kind of calm down though. You know what I mean? It's kind of like if someone like fucking like like if if they pinch you or something or they punch you, it yeah. makes you think about that. Or if you uh-huh. feel a certain pain, they like you physically, <laughs> it makes you think about not necessarily what's in your brain, but what just happened right here. Like someone just punched me. Some, something just happened or an ant just bit me. Like, and yeah. it just takes that away. So I guess that's what the mineral water did for you. Yeah, but, uh, and then I had them every day after that. Yeah, you talk, you, you say that on the wow. album, bro, and that's, uh, that's, that's crazy, Up man. Up until I was probably about 28 from, uh, I was, uh, it was on my... 19th birthday 
So every day I had an anxiety attack. Uh, Wait, so it was your 19th birthday? I thought it was the 18th. 18th. Uh, that's, yeah. what the, yeah, 18th <laughs> that's what the album birthday. says. 18th birthday. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Like, I, I can say that I when, when I heard that, I related to it. Um, my first uh, my first experience with anxiety, I think, uh, I remember, I think uh, I was having this, I was, I was just having these thoughts about death. You know what I'm saying? And this is probably like the first time I actually like spoke on this, that outside of, outside of the person that was there. Um, this is weird. Damn, sharing this on the pod. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? He shared, he shared his person. I'll uh, share mine real quick. Like, I think mine was, I was thinking about death and I was thinking about like God, I was thinking about religion, I was thinking about all these things, and I was thinking about afterlife, all these things. And then all these things that you can't control. All yeah, things you can't control, bro. Mm-hmm. And I immediately had an outer body experience. It's like you just kind of just lose yourself. No pun intended to, <laughs> to the Eminem track. But yeah, this all this all makes full circle. But yeah. you literally I literally just like lost myself. Like I haven't even told him this. This is crazy. Like the only person that knows is is the the lady that was there, you know what I'm saying? And um and yeah, I just like lost myself for a second, bro. And I had all these thoughts. I started looking up on YouTube, like afterlife and spirituality and all these other things, reincarnation. And yeah, it, now that I think about it, you kind of answered that for me, bro. It was a feeling of thinking about something that you're not in control of anymore. You know what I'm saying? And now you're testing your beliefs. You're testing your faith. You're your testing all these things. tricks on you. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like, fuck, what's the reason of living? Like, And then you just see yourself. And, you know, I'm not trying to scare nobody. No, no. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I mean, because it's, it's reality. But, like, I just saw myself as, like, this this little-ass ant on this, on this planet. You know what I'm saying? This little-ass figure. And it's like, bro, like, you ain't ready for this life, bro. Like, or you ain't ready for anything. Or better yet, it don't mean shit anymore. None of it means anything. Your ambitions, your goals, your family, your friends, none of that. And it, it, it scared the fuck out of me, bro. Uh, I was like, I was in the restroom. I got out of there. And, uh, you know, I was uh, telling the person, I'm not going to say her name on air. Um, but, yeah, and she, she comforted me. And she was, like, she was like, you're okay. And she started telling me all these positive things. She was just like, you got to believe. And we were just talking about Jesus and all these other things. And um, she calmed me down. But that was my first anxiety experience experience i ever had and it wasn't it wasn't as early as 18 though bro like that's insane like that's crazy bro like i i think mine was like shit whenever the j cole album force not forest hills drive uh uh the one after that for, for your, your eyes, eyes only for your eyes before your eyes only dropped like probably what five years ago something like that yeah yeah something like five, that six, seven. yeah when that happened because i remember the next day going to work and I was jamming that album, you know what I'm saying? And whatever. And I love that album, but that album starts off talking about from whom the bell, whatever, whatever that first song. And and I heard that that title has to do something with like death or whatever. And I was like, fuck, like now I'm really thinking about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go now, you know, and it's when I worked at Kroger, I never told nobody. This is my first time talking about it publicly to anybody. This is weird. I just, I just got cool off right now. <laughs> but yo, that's the cool thing about safe spaces, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There's like a there's like a there's like an alcoholic anonymous me without the alcohol. <laughs> this anxiety and not anonymous, you know what I'm saying? Anxiety, mental health anonymous. You know, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all good. You you gotta let it out sometimes. That's oh, why yeah, every, everybody deals with it. So everybody, so you everybody. said from from 18 to you about 28. So that's what 10 years Something every day. Like that. So and that's just when it stopped happening every day. You know, I still so I still how, have them up to this day. Well, so outside of maybe the music, how do you cope with it now? Still mineral water. <laughs> just music, just music only. That's 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 it. Just music, different forms. You know, sometimes I'll just my mind will be racing. I I know it's a mind game. By this time, you know, I've yeah. studied it. I looked right, right, everything right. up, seen different reviews of people that have it. Blah blah blah. So, um, so you don't take anything for it? No, 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 okay. no medication. Cool. I'm yeah, like man. taking well, music pills is. No more. <laughs> <laughs> music yeah. is medica- uh, medication. So. Yeah, so either I'm writing music or I'm listening to music, listening to beats. Uh, what I like to put on when it gets real bad is uh, Pink Floyd, Hey You. Oh, that shit. It calms me down a lot. That's dope. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's funny because on that track, Damn, man, I sound like such a nerd. I'm like <laughs> on that track, man. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned fucking, um, you mentioned how Cole. Damn, we just talked about Cole. You mentioned how Cole says, "You damn right, bro. We should try meditation." You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We should try. We you sh- we should try that out. 
uh, would you ever practice meditation? Or better yet, do you find meditation in things like a Pink Floyd song or whatever? Uh, I meditated about 15 minutes for, for 15 minutes before I headed out here. Like a real practice? Like, yeah, meditation. Okay. Just right there and having some music playing, just like meditation music. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's dope. Uh, yeah. Where'd you where'd you pick up something like that? Because I when I found, when I actually like I went to uh, I went to a meditation class one time, you know what I'm saying? And it was literally like in like this dance ballroom type thing. And there's a dude right there uh, show, showing us the ropes, how to do it. We had the mats and everything, man. And that's how I learned. You know what I'm saying? And it was super releasing. It felt really good. And I was like. I was like, man, Mark's doing you. I don't feel, I don't feel less of a man like this. Shit, yeah. I could tell my homeboys about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I would hope they could do. It. I was like, now nah, I know why Cole said that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, you don't feel no weird. Don't be weird about it. My homie got kicked out of a meditation class. What the fuck? Because <laughs> how? Because he smelled like green. Oh, <laughs> that's gay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he should, he should, he, I mean come that's on, part it's of weed. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's, if it chills you out, homeboy yeah, told him yeah. he, he wouldn't be able to like reach his like his potential in you're the high ball of because you're high and all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, all and right, I'm going to go to a different uh, clinic now. Bye. Right. I'm not even going to put my fucking, uh, the, the dude that taught us the meditation shit, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that guy <laughs> dives into like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, marijuana and other shit. You know what I'm saying? Not, not like crazy shit, like Coke or anything like that. Cause he's a chill dude, but he, he, he's, you know what I'm saying? Maybe psychedelic shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing that's crazy. Hard drugs is going to have him like fucking up in life and shit. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, man, where did you pick up a practice like that, bro? Um, I mean, I can't remember exactly where I heard it from. I mean, of course you've heard of meditation throughout the years, right, but, uh, right. I don't remember where I turned to that. Well, I, of course it had to do with something with my anxiety. Yeah. Like I said, I looked up a lot of things, you know, medicines, practices, uh, count your breathings and all this bullshit. But uh, most of it don't work. Not for me, at least. I'm not going to say it don't work for anybody, but a lot of it didn't work for me. But uh, I tried meditation before, but now I started trying it again recently because I got a better understanding. Oh, shit. You know, it's all about, you know, controlling your thoughts. You know, you, and you you can't really control your thoughts. I mean, they're going to wander regardless, but yeah. that's what they mean. Just know that your thoughts are going to wander. Oh, yeah. shit. You know what I mean? But, um, I mean, it's different for different people. Everybody don't have the same meditation, <laughs> I wouldn't think, because everybody don't have the same mind. Yeah. You know? Shit, I appreciate you saying that, man, because when I heard that bar, um, it's, it's crazy. But, like, I literally, a couple days before I heard that bar... I had like I had myself an anxiety attack, like you know what I'm saying, and I'm one deep in the crib, you know what I'm saying, and I thought it it, it got bad to a point to where I was like, I need to call the fucking hospital, like if if I don't if if someone don't put me down, you know what I'm saying, not on some like like kill me type shit, but if someone at least don't put me to sleep right now, because I'm not gonna be able to sleep right now at all, you know what I'm saying, and and yeah, so it, it's real, bro, and it's all it's all here. Yeah, it's all it, the thoughts. It's all the mind game. It's all it's all the mind game. It's all your thoughts, bro. Because yeah. I'll wake up the next day and I'll be like, okay, I don't feel like this anymore. Like you know what I'm saying? But then it's just, once the night, once the, once the day fades, whoo. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's all it's all the mind thing, man. Is is what you put in your your soul and yourself. What you allow. Yeah. We have we do That's have it. control over that. Oh yeah, you we have, have control. What you, you have, put you in have you. full control of that because uh, yeah. It's like you said, it's all in your mind. You control your mind. Yeah. I mean, I'm reading a book right now called The Secret. It talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, even from your sight, what you listen to, um, you know, even, and then what you eat. It's yep. like, it's, 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 it's all, it's all, you know, mm -hmm. plays with the mind. And then that's where most anxiety attacks comes from. You yeah. Know? And then. I feel, I feel like y'all, y'all like so putting me on game right now. I, I, <laughs> I'm like. No, nah, I mean, it's just, it's just. You know, you learn things and you see things. And myself, I haven't personally went through a, a full anxiety panic attack, if you will. Mm -hmm. But uh, my mind, like you say, the mind wanders. I mean, I used to be one of those just like, you know, this, you know, afterlife. You know, me being a preacher kid, I'm always thinking about afterlife. Well, mm -hmm. Always, especially when I was younger, you know. So, uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's just, but once you realize, like, you in control, you do have control over that, you know. Mm -hmm. You do have control over that. 
Um, and, and it's just what you react to and how you react and how you deal with it. Yeah. That's the most important part. I you think I think I think me it has to do with like I can be super hyperactive, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so like I've been I've been kind of chilling on like caffeine and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that could trigger it, you know, mm-hmm. like I could take a I could take a a Tylenol that has caffeine in it, bro. Yeah. And well, now I'm like super impact. weak to that shit, bro. Like yeah. it'll, like I think that's what kind of triggered it the last time. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, I appreciate you sharing that, bro. Real yeah, talk, like you didn't man. you didn't have to I, share I, that, bro. Like nah nah shit. Sharing. I mean, it's good to share it because someone watching might have yeah, anxiety. Defi- it might it might have helped helping. someone right now. Most definitely, Yo, and I'm gonna most keep definitely. it 100 with you, Hoffa. I appreciate you sharing that because you know one thing I had like growing up because you know when it comes to cats like you, like I grew up with cats like you. You know what I'm saying and whatnot, and they always uh, hold back. Or yeah. they don't share, or they don't, they don't. Uh, it's they're too tough, or yeah. too whatever, too, too masculine. That's that's the worst thing to do if you have anxiety is hold back anything. And bro, like all that shit got to come out, or it'll build up. Exactly, yeah. and 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 I appreciate a cat that has your background, you know what I'm saying, and whatnot, and you're able to share that and not even feel like you don't feel less of anything about your stuff. Like you're still you're still Joe Hoffa at the end of the day. Nah, like you're still I, Hoffa. I live my truth. That's definitely. Yeah, man, you That's definitely it. do, bro. <laughs> you know, from from your music and everything, man, and it, and it reflects. So I'm glad it's able to reflect also on your personality and interviews and shit. Because I'm telling you, bro, like shit like that's going to hit someone. You know what I'm saying? There could be someone that's listening right now, bro. There could be a youngster. Right. You know what I'm saying? There could be someone in our age group. Somebody needs to hear it, bro. And especially when you're saying this shit happened when you were 18, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's super young to me because, like I said, mine didn't hit to like early 20s. Almost mid twenty, something like that. But yeah, man. So I, I appreciate you sharing that, man. And I already, wish I knew. Already. I wish I knew. You speak on a lot of life lessons on there, bro. And super dope track. Everything about it. I had hit you up, and I was like, bro, I hope that there's a video coming to this. Oh, I yeah. want to say there is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a video to that because that was damn near everyone's favorite uh, track on the album. I think you previewed it on on Facebook. I think you went, you got on Facebook and you actually like did did a, like a little solo like selfie video in your car. Yeah, and yeah. And you were spinning like I wish I knew, and I think you said I wish I knew part two, but I think part two was just the second verse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I was like, there's no I wish I knew part two. Nah, it was just the second verse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I think I posted the first verse too, like a couple weeks before that. Dog, that shit works for you, man. I fucking seen you going viral. Uh, on social media, like on Facebook, whenever you just be in your car and you just be rapping your songs and shit. Yeah. And, and that should be getting like a couple thousand views every time you do that shit, bro. And yeah. I think it's the it's the J-Dog effect. And what I mean by that is like when you're when you're super passionate, just off the rip, without no microphone, no studio, no none of that, and you're just right there, like how many videos we done seen of J-Dog in the middle of the street, in the studio, live, no actual song, just rapping the song yeah. right there. Someone could just pull out their phone. Oh, J-Dog here. Hey, J-Dog, can you he tell me something? Shit, and he just yeah. going, huh, 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 like, you know what I'm saying? How? Whatever. <laughs> it's it's different. Yeah. It's super different. And it and it grabs people right there. You could say the most craziest bars in the world. You could be lyrical, miracle, spiritual, whatever. But if it's a motherfucker that actually means what the fuck they're saying, it's going to hit harder. And it doesn't matter what they do it on. They could do it on in front of their phone, in the car. Or they could put it on wax on the track. You know what I'm saying? That shit's going to hit. And I think that's the effect you have, bro. And I think your hood definitely rocks with that for real. Oh, yeah, definitely. They've been, they been rocking with me forever, man. Uh, they believed in me before I even believed in myself. They would even tell me, man, you just got to get off them pills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to pop a lot of pills back in the day, man. Uh, Xanax. Yeah. Exos. Back in the day, guys. Yeah, back, back in, in the, the day. day. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I knew. <laughs> Hoffa did that so you didn't have to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Ain't that what Hove says? He's like, Hove did that, so hopefully you ain't gotta go through that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm I'm glad, man. I'm glad that you ended up finding out what you what you what you now know. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. I'm and glad yeah, I survived all, to learn it. Yeah, I was just for to say you're here to to have learned that. Yeah. And pass it on. Yo, man, uh we have we have a we have another guest in the building, bro. Super cool that the way that family ties and music and the way that the H-Town scene works, bro, like, it's, it's it's sometimes, like, it just hits home, you know what I'm saying, with this creative shit. And it's super dope when you have someone in your family because me, I ain't gonna lie, I could try to look down my family line. I don't think I had another family member that did music or anything like that. It was just me, you know what I'm saying, straight up. 
And your cousin Real is in the building. Shout out to H H four L. You know what I'm saying? And Real actually, before we even got here, he had messaged me. And it's crazy because I was actually gonna uh I was actually gonna hit him up myself, but he hit me up first. And he answered what I was actually gonna ask him anyways. He he wanted to know, man. He had a he had a question for you. So he wanted to know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hold on, let me get to it real quick. I just had it down. Uh, shit, shit, he, said, he said he gave you ten dollars. <laughs> right. <in 2012. laughs> when you, you going to pay me with, my with, intre- with interest and inflation? Dollars, it's it's now sixteen fifty. Uh, I'm the one bought him that water. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so uh, and my bad. I had to look at my notes because he literally messaged me this before we got here. You know what I'm saying? So this was like super fresh on my mind as well. But I had seen it, and I was actually gonna ask about it, ask about you, uh, ask about it anyways, because I had seen him share it on Facebook. So there is an old song of yours that was back from 2009 that's on his YouTube channel, mm. and it's called Soul Cry. Yeah. And he wanted to know how did that come about, even though he knows, but he wanted me to ask you that. <laughs> you know what I'm nah, saying? He probably don't know. He probably Uh-oh. don't know. Uh, Soul Cry. I wrote that when I was locked up too. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote uh, that. I think. I don't want to say, nah, it wasn't the same year that I wrote a Heartbleed. Um, I believe I was 19. I think I was locked up in Louisiana at the time. Oh, shit. Yeah, um, I wrote that in there. I mean, I just did it with no beat or nothing. I was just, I think my my celly was just doing the beat, you know, on his chest, how they be doing. Yeah. And I was just writing, and that's how, that's how that came about. I mean. Bruh, <laughs> you have... You have you have a lot of notes, or no, you have a lot of lyrics that you wrote at that time, bro, and they ended up coming out to be fire-ass tracks. I got more before that. Dog, are these, uh, if you haven't already laced them on a beat, you know what I'm saying, are there some that you're probably going to lace up on a track eventually? Man, I keep asking myself that same question. Uh, most of the time, the answer is no. Oh, so why is that? You don't want to revisit that time? Nah, nah, I just... Think they need to stay exactly where they're at, how they're at. I feel that, man. Because I, I was gonna say because I would hope you weren't gonna say, oh, because I feel like I'm a better rapper now. Because nah, because like when you hear heart bleeding, then I heard soul cry. Uh, oh, yeah. When I heard soul cry, I was like, bro, this is from '09. I'm like, bro, like if this was him back then, and then like I was like, I understand. I okay, yes, there's growth. I get it. Right. But that was a dope ass rapper in '09. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was that Joe or Hoff? And for him to only. That was have Joe growth Hoffa. from there. That was Joe Hoff. Yeah, that was Joe Hoff. Because <laughs> shit, I fucking you know I'm pretty sure um, I'm not gonna put real out there. You know what I'm saying? So I won't do it. But I'm pretty sure there's artists that can go back to their older music from what was that? Oh nine. So that's eleven years ago, twelve years ago. Man, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And bro, if I was to go back to my work like that, I'm like, I'm a cringe. I'm gonna be like, yo, I don't. <laughs> I'm like because the talent. Because I wasn't that good. Yeah. I was I was trash. Yeah. It's crazy there's older shit than that. Yeah, there's older shit than that that still jams up to this day. Uh, it's just hard to find. Were you always... Because um, I seen a picture. I seen a picture from back in the day, man. And it was you and your homie. And you were in the crib. And uh, and what'd you call it? And it was an old throwback Thursday. You recently just posted it too, man. And you said you were in the lab. Uh-huh. Were you doing recordings at your home at that time? Yeah, I was... Uh, and how old were you at that time? 16, 17, 16. 16 years old, that's when I had the studio in my room and I was recording myself. Oh, I learned shit. how to... I learned it by myself. Uh, I had a friend uh, that used to live down the street from me. He used to record with me, too. Uh, he had some input on how to do stuff and, you know... It was just basically we just recorded our waves. We there wasn't no mixing and mastering for us. We just tweaked it a little here and there, yeah. and uh, you know put it on CDs and threw it out there. Oh I shit! I was 16 years old when I dropped my first little mixtape, the beginning. And the hood was rocking with it. Shh. Hell yeah, they still rocking with it. They want me to bring that whole album back. Shit, maybe you should you should do it, or better yet, like I'm interested in it, man. I might have it like remastered or something. Anniversary re-release or something, or. I don't even remember when it was released. <laughs> you can make your own anniversary. Goddamn. <laughs> right, right. Shit. Shit. Someone might know, though. I can ask around. Someone yeah. might know. At that time, were you uh, confident enough to sell your music? Or, or were yeah, you just I giving it out for them, free? I sold them $10 a pop. Holy shit. We had about maybe 500 copies. Yeah. 
that we oh, pressed shit. up, wow. wrote the name on them ourselves, fam. For you younger kids, they would go on these things called CDs. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'd put and, them in, in, our, white in our stereos. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not CD players. Walkman. Yeah, exactly. Put them in the Walkman. If you had a Bluetooth back then, that didn't mean something was wrong with your tooth. <laughs> Yeah, but we passed a couple out, you know, yeah. just to get the buzz out there. In the morning, we went to school, passed a couple out, and uh, by lunchtime, we were selling them, though. Yeah. At that time, were you were you, uh, were you you going by Hoffa, or were you going through some rap change name, like some rap name changes? I think by then, I was Hoffa already. Did you have any other rap names back in the day? Uh, just Jolo and uh, Too Deep. Too Deep? Too Deep. Oh, shit. Yeah, because my cousin was one real. Not this real. I got another oh, cousin. Oh, shit. I got another cousin that, uh, that I actually started rapping with, uh, One Real. Oh, shit. Shout out to One Real, man. Yeah, what's up, cuz? 100. Yo, man, and and speaking of real, um, I'm curious. Like, he's from the North. you from the Southeast. Um, Both make music. Um, As far as... uh, he, he had told me to ask you about Soul Cry because he had said that you had took that to his crib to go record it. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's when I um I went to go stay with him for a little bit. Yeah. And uh when I when I got in there, I didn't even know he had the studio in there. I was just I So just this was the first in. time y'all linked up. Uh probably in a while. We probably seen each other at a family event here and there, but as far as like going to chill with him, you know, and then Clever was there and all the hardheads were there. So I walked in, they were already rapping, so I was like, yeah. Oh shit, I'm right at home. Yeah. I came right oh, in time. So you know, I told him, hey, I got something I, I got written down. The yeah. I wrote that I had written down in jail, and that was actually written down. I think I still had the paper and everything. So uh, I went in there, and I dropped it that same night, I, I believe, right? The same night, yeah. Holy shit, man. I That's... remember, I, th- I think I was all tabbed out, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this was back in 09, guys. Yeah, 09, 09. Not 2021. Yeah. Nah, man, the reason why I say shit like that is because I know that there's... Um, there's interviewers like recently, like I know DJ Vlad's been getting a lot of shit for like getting uh, artists like uh, damn near incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? In his interviews, themselves. you know, uh, telling, telling on themselves. Yeah, but they yeah. actually pimp. Like me, that's why. Like that's why me. Like whenever it comes to artists, man, like I try my best to, to like they yo. To only if you want to say some or better yet, like hey. When was the time it happened? Because it's not today. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. or whatever. I would never, I would never put an artist in that position, bro. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they got a background. Like, I know who I'm interviewing. I'm not finna be that guy. Yeah. I'm not finna be like, yeah, so where were you around this this time and date? And da 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 Man, that was just last week. Is that why you, got, oh, you didn't get locked up for that? Oh, okay, bet. So that's new. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Like, so they didn't find out about that. You're still on the run. I, I would never be that guy, man. I would never put you in that position either, bro. I think that's some whole ass shit. Luckily, I was able to. Unfortunately, well, I mean, it taught me some things. I was able to have experiences with family members who also kind of had similar backgrounds as yours. And, you know, it taught me some sh- shit about how to communicate with those type of people or better yet, uh, how to shut the fuck up sometimes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? When yeah, needed. Yeah. I know you see me on the podcast and we'd be like, you know what I'm saying, acting a fool or whatever. But at the same time, when it comes to like personal shit like that, I'm just like, I, I know my limits. I know my boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you yeah. better. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. Hey man. Hey, this is <laughs> Hey, this is my moment, man. Let me be. No, no, no. But uh so th- was that the first time musically that you and Real linked up? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's dope, man. And, and what what did we make? We made about maybe 3 or 4 tracks together in the time frame while I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah. Oh, should we put him on the mic? <laughs> My nah, bad. It's all good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yo, man, and that's super dope, bro. Like, I, I think that I think it's kind of tight because he actually like mentioned you last time as being a major influence on them, bro. So, I think that I think the way that it all ties together, man, is it, is super tight, man. Like at the end of the day, you inspired someone, bro, and yeah. y'all are both going at the same time. Like even though, like, yeah, while you were while you had to while you had to figure your things out or whatever, 
he was in the ground running with with Clever and all that, and they had they had their movement. And then I now that you're out here and you're like super active, and I look at the video views that you have and all that other shit, you're right there with them. Like y'all y'all both grinding and getting it at the same time, bro. And it's super dope to see, man. And I, I just hope that y'all keep it going. Um, speaking of that, speaking of movements, um, MC music corruption, baby. How'd you get down with music corruption? Uh, my boy George, I ran into him at the barbershop. This was before I knew him, though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he 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 seen me or whatever, and he was like, hey, I heard you be rapping and shit. It's like, I got a studio at the house. You know, you want to come by and check it out. And uh, he knows me through another mutual friend, uh, my boy Allen. What's up, boy? Um, you know, that that's how he told me he heard of me. He was like, you know, Allen told me you rap, whoop the woo so I actually did go over there. I was like, yeah, well, let me go check it out. I actually had been writing, I told him, because I hadn't been in a while. Yeah. Or, you know, writing in my head or whatever. I still stay writing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> you know, and uh, so I went over there, and they were doing their thing, and uh, they were recording and shit, and then everybody left, and me and George chopped it up, and he was like, you got something written down? So I, I spit something for him. I can't even remember what it was. It was either the lights out, or shout out track two on Missing Prodigy. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Lights Out, and he was like, "Bro, he was like, you want to record that right now?" He's like, "I won't charge you or nothing. I just want to hear that bitch drop." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, "Shit, actually, oh yeah, I don't remember if I came back the next day because I think it was kind of late." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was kind of late, so I told him I come back, and then I went back and I recorded it, and um. Uh, then about maybe three or four days later, he reached out to me on uh, Facebook, and he was like, I don't know what you got going on right now, uh, or if you're with anybody, or what you're doing. He was like, but I want to extend an invitation for you to join MC. Yeah. And I told him I'd think about it, because I never really did the whole group things and stuff like that. I was always You've just, always been solo? Uh, yeah. Pretty Majority much. of the well, time. Well, I, I was with uh, uh, ABDB, All About That Business. You know, that was me, my boy Dietrich, and my boy Peepo. Shout out. Yeah. But that was just, uh, you know, my hood homies. That we, that's who I would freestyle with every day, anyway. So I remember those days, man. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So we I, would I know go, what you mean go to that. my boy's house and be on the karaoke and record shit on tapes, transferring it from the tapes to the CDs. And those were the fun yeah. times, though, man. <laughs> those are the fun times. Yeah, but other than that, I, I just, you know, rap by myself. That was it. And that's dope, man. And when you got there, were there already artists that were already part of the label, or were yeah, you yeah. first? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually went to school with all of them. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so shit. I, I, we all know each other in some kind of way. Yeah. Maybe except for uh, my boy uh, Shorty Guap. You know what I'm saying? I, I I didn't. I only met him through George. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bet that, man. Well, that that's dope. It sounds like y'all got a tight knit crew there. I like, like I said uh, before we started the podcast, I like the way y'all move because. Um, one thing George got going on is uh, so far, man, y'all are moving super smart. Uh, f- like I said, we were talking before the podcast started, and it's like once one of y'all drops a video, all of y'all share it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All of y'all go in, and it's like it's it's a teamwork effort. You know what I'm saying? I see that with y'all. I see that with, with my boys out of HH4L. You know what I'm saying? And the way that y'all move, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just all drop at the same. Uh, if someone drops, everybody's like posting it. You know what I'm saying? And it works. Works so good, and y'all are so much of a dope unit. That y'all made the top twenty Latin artists. Shout out to Javas, uh, my boy Javas and, and Krim uh, from Krim's Crib, man. They put yeah, together a top out, twenty out. Latin list of uh, artists, and y'all made the list, man. And that's super dope, bro. And and it just goes to show that the work y'all have, man. When you got when you saw that, bro, like what was your initial feeling? Uh, I mean, I was happy about it, most yeah. definitely. You know, um, I mean, I don't really take it into consideration as far as like how I should feel as an artist. I mean, that's all in me. Yeah. You know, so any list I'm on or I'm not on, it's it's just not nothing to me really. No, not taking away from all their hard work. I know they left some artists out. They couldn't yeah. they weren't on there. You know, I'm still thankful that I was on there, me and the team. You know, I think I think me and the team deserve it. That's good, man. I think you're supposed to have that mind state though, man. Like unlike me, like I ain't gonna lie, like I, I think it's because I'm hyperactive that if I get mentioned like that, like I remember when I was uh, when I made the Day of Unity uh, top five with Clever, and yeah, that I, was dope. That was dope. Huh? Oh, Hopper yeah. was on it. Yeah. Oh shit, awkward. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they were voting on the slide group. Yeah. 
Oh, oh for yeah, real? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He he knew that shit, Hoffa. He just that's no, right. I did. Nah, Hoffa, I did take him out. I forgot about it. I forgot about it. Cut his mic off. Finish what you started. <laughs> Sitting sit here tuning his horn. He dead unity. He, he knew that shit. <laughs> yeah, but see. <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. Look, here's why I probably didn't see him, and here's why. <laughs> Because I'm such a hyperactive ass person, I got so fucking excited just seeing my name on there. That's all I needed. <laughs> and around that time period when I got named like the top five, like, you know what I'm saying? I was probably the most excited out of all of them. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I'm from a whole different town. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that was in that bitch was like Houston. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, you got you got people like Clever who's already been, got the accolades for shit. His name's been out there. Me, like, I couldn't control myself. I'm like, yo, I'm like writing in cap letters. I'm like, I made the top five. Holy <laughs> shit. Da, 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 da. Look, mom. You know, and, and then you got you got people like Clever that are, that like post like the next day, be like, yeah, man. So this happened yesterday. I won. Da, 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 da. Super excited. You know, saying whatever. And he was excited, but uh, but I was I'm definitely I would say a more hyper active person. You know what I'm saying? So whenever I hear news like what you got with the top twenty, I wanna I wanna get to a point to where you know I could be able like, yeah, man, I appreciate it. That was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like I thank you, thank you very much. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep moving and get it. You know what I'm saying? But me, I'm like super like, ah, you know what I'm saying? I, I got to control that sometimes, man. What we got? What we got? Nah, you feel how you Bet feel. That. You feel how you feel. Yeah, man. And it's super dope, man. So congratulations on that, bro, because that Congrats. list that list had Snow the product on there. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? That shit had. She was number one, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She as she one. should be. She is, she is the, I would say, as far as hip-hop goes, I mean, yeah, we could throw Bad Bunny in there and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like, uh, I see where th- I see where they were going with the list, and it wasn't kind of leaning towards like where we can add a Bad Bunny or a Cardi B on there. You know what I'm saying? Who's a Latina? Whoever, whoever don't know, you know what I'm saying or whatever. I I get it. I know where they were leaning towards. So uh, so yeah. So I understand why I Snow the product would be on the top of that list. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate she that a beast. They, she a beast. And I appreciate that they actually catered. To uh to Houston X, you know what I'm saying, and and got the underground cats on there, yeah. Because yeah, when you yeah. put those names on there, and you know those big artists like a Cap G and all that, they may repost that, and it's like, oh shit, I'm gonna go watch this YouTube video. Oh, bet, yo, who's MC Entertainment? Who's Music Corruption? Who's Hoffa? I'm gonna go look them up right now. You yeah, know what I'm saying, yeah. and all that other shit. So there's numerous things that come out of being on lists like those. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, that's super dope, man. Real quick before we go. What's in the future for Hoffa? You just dropped Angel 1211. You know what I'm saying? I know we got music videos on the way. What's in the future for Hoffa? Uh, in the near future, I'm trying to, um, since he's here, I'm going to throw that out first. Uh, I'm trying to get a collab with my cousin over there. You know, uh, Real? Yeah, my cousin Real at the Hardheads. Wow. Trying to get a collab a with A whole him. album? Yeah, a whole album. Oh, okay. Let's, yeah. Oh, you got to make that happen, man. Call yeah. it uh, Leave Us Alone. The album. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> and if y'all don't know, that's actually Hoffa's last last name. Yeah, leave, us. leave us. Oh God. That's that's fucking dope. So y'all weren't even bullshitting when we <laughs> before we started the podcast and I was talking about y'all's last name. And you were like doing that. Yeah, yeah. It, oh, all God. the leave us to say that shit. Leave us alone. Dog, that's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, y'all gotta y'all gotta do that. Yeah, but my so, bad, keep going. I was well, just I that just it, threw yeah. me off like big time. Go. I wanna do that. I want to get a, um, well, there's probably a couple things I can't talk about right now. Um, That's fine. Just talk about what you feel comfortable. I do want to do another Missing Prodigy. Oh, dope. Part two? Yeah, part two to it. Bad. And, of course, I'm going to drop another album after that. Oh, man, bro. Well, I can't wait, man. Can't wait. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, when I first met you, oh. Huh? Compilation? Oh, yeah, uh, with, uh. MC and HH4L. Oh yeah, I seen something like that. Then y'all like it's I seen some hashtag and y'all like combine the names or some yeah, shit. Yeah. I think Clever did that. I seen it somewhere. What? Do, do we have a title yet? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's in the works. Oh shit, that's gonna be hard, bro. Y'all gonna have the best. Uh I wanna say, is everybody on MC from the South Side or is it like a various? Yeah, yeah, everyone from the Southeast. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got the Southeast and the North Side clicking together, bro. This shit's like you know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, bro. Nah, you know nah. what I'm saying? When you had Rec Shop and SUC and everybody coming together hey, it, and all it, these it, other clicks. It's going to be legendary. Oh, man. That's what's up. Yo, man. This is super dope, man. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. Like I said, when I first met you at the uh, 
when I first met you at the at the mixer, man, um, I remember I don't know who came up to who first. I, I'm one of those people I like to shake hands with everybody and say what's up to everybody. So I probably came up to him first. Hi, Mr. Hoffa. But here's the thing though. Nah, he didn't know who I was at the time. No, nah, I didn't. <laughs> I I just I was just energetic and just trying to, you know, say what's up. And like he uh he was he was just super quiet. He was just in the corner to himself, didn't didn't didn't, you know what I'm saying, didn't cater to nobody, nothing like that. He just pulled up. I didn't even know if he rapped because he wasn't necessarily like that talkative type of person. But thought I, you were still in the cell, man. Nah. <laughs> I say you thought you were still in the cell. Or something? Nah, nah. That's how I always am. Everywhere I but, go, though, that's what's up, though, I'm just kind of peeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I seen that. Yeah. And, and and I was like, you know what? Like, huh? <laughs> All right now. Damn. Hey, yeah. man. Shout out to Overthinkers Podcast. Getting nah. that out of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yo, um, but yeah, man. Whenever whenever I uh, I met you, man, it was just super. When it comes to people like that, man, I get super interested immediately because it's those people that I want to get to know because I feel like, how can I say this, man? I feel like they're the more interesting ones in the room, the lack of what they're not sharing. And it could be someone that has a lot of knowledge or something to to get. What are you hiding over there? Why are you so quiet? What are you hiding? (laughs) In a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In a way, yeah. And and sometimes, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Like when when you're at these mixes and all that, those be the most important people sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I was like, man, let me see what this cat's up to. And he told me he rapped. You know what I'm saying? I I do this, I do that. Um, I don't know. I want to say we followed each other after that. I don't know. I don't know if that happened or not. But regardless, you were telling me that. And you were telling me like, yeah, man. Uh, uh, you. Uh, I think I seen you in the top five. A day unity. I was in there too. He was like. Uh, he was like. Uh, he was like. I didn't. I didn't make the oh, top so five. Oh, you do remember? No. Yeah. Oh, no, see? no. 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 Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. No. 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 Now it's coming back to me. It's coming back to me yeah, now. It's yeah. coming back to me now. It's coming back to me now. Okay. So. So yeah. He. You told me told that. You. Oh yeah. Because I remember. I felt weird. No. 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 I felt weird. Because I was like, "Fuck, I didn't talk to the wrong person yeah, now." I like now, the wrong guy. like he, he got a beer in his hand. I'm like, "Fuck, maybe he's drunk now." He's was gonna, it a twisted tea? Like I don't <laughs> nah, nah. like. Should I be confident and say like, "Yeah, I earned that," you know, like rightfully, you know what I'm saying? But he had, to, but he was cool about it. He was like, "Yeah," he was like, "I was," he was like, "I could have made top five, but, you know, I was in the Mark same." Mark was talking shit, man. Yeah, yeah, I was in the day you beat all the motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, what was their names? Yeah. It was hey okay. man, look, whatever I said at the time on social media, I was just being competitive, guys. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna see this man right here, right next to yeah. me. <laughs> yo, man. But um, but anyways, uh, but yeah, man. And you, you had told me that you're just like, yo, like uh, the one of the guys you're you're in the top five with. Uh, I'm I'm cool with his name is Clever. He's actually a uh, he's actually like my uh, homeboys with my kin folk, real. And I didn't know real at the time, but like he was just like he was like, yeah, real. He's from HH4L. I'm like, oh, bet, bet, bet. And uh, and and from there, man. Uh. Social media, we know yeah. mutual people. So, um, so ultimately, the day of unity brought people together. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Real. <laughs> yeah, or do you just call each other that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And and that and that's what it was because, like, um. Cause it's it's what happens is that it's like after you know you have mutual people on social media after you add each other and you find out like oh okay like yeah he said his cousin was real you know saying he knows clever all that other shit and you told me how you used to you know freestyle with him or some other shit or however you linked up with them musically and and yeah so I start seeing him share your shit um we have other friends that are mutual they start sharing your shit and I'm like oh shit like yo this dude that said that he raps at the mixer. This dude goes hard. He for real raps. Yeah, like this dude, like he rap rap. Yeah, like he like he goes in. You know what I'm saying? That's not even necessarily to take any. It's just I hadn't I hadn't heard anything before. So whenever I got my first like look at at, at your music and I saw the videos and all that, I was like, all right, I like this dude goes hard. Like you know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that we're able to. This is kind of dope. This is why we have this platform here, man. Most because definitely. it's for artists like you. You know what I'm saying? That go hard in the pain in the city, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all having me too. Yeah, most oh, yeah. definitely, man. It's been a great time. Um, thank you once again for pulling up. Uh, I know George was supposed to pull up, but uh, we ain't gonna say uh, in, as far as his personal business. But we hope he feels better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, George? We hope you feel better, man. Um, real quick before we uh, go though, um, just want to shout out something real quick. Uh, 
yo, I seen some crazy shit, man. And this is why, you know, I, I got tested for COVID today and came back negative. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're able to have the show. Uh, everybody here, you know what I'm saying? We get our fever checked and all that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hoffa, he's had a share of tests. Everybody's healthy here and we're fine. But the reason why I'm bringing that up, man, I just want to shout out real quick someone that watches our show. Um, my boy Joey Medina, man. He's in the hospital right now and he's a. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I want to say he's in the ICU. He had like this breathing machine on him, and uh, yeah. yeah, and he he he. Uh, I I tried keeping in touch with him because uh, I went to school with him back in the day, man. And we were like really close friends, you know. But you know how life goes, man. It'll take you different ways or whatever. But he's always like kept up with my music, and he's always kept up even with the podcast, bro. He'll share the podcast, you know what I'm saying? And, or there's times I might have a show, and uh, and he might be there, you know what I'm saying? And and or I might run into him. Like I ran into him at the Day of Unity Festival because he likes going to things that are like dope house and SPM related, yeah. SUC type shit. He's super H town with the music scene, so he likes pulling up, and he's like a he's a big fan of those uh, of those events. So I catch him all the time, and he'll be like, bro, it's tight to see you here, man, Mark. I'll be seeing you on the grind, bro. Super dope to see you out here. Are you performing? Da, 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 da. So he's been a supporter of mine uh, in numerous ways. And on a personal level, like I said, man, he was a real good friend of mine. But unfortunately, he is in ICU. And uh, I want to stay on the positive side of things, and I want to stay on the optimistic side of things. And Joey, if you're listening, man, uh, oh, shit, let me look at the camera. Joey. I hope you uh I hope you get better and I hope you find optimism in this somehow, some way. I hope you find a way to best entertain yourself. And I'm not finna tell you keep your head up like other people are telling you because I feel like although that is a good thing to say, we're not in your position to say that. You know what I'm saying? Keep your head up. It's it's kinda hard to tell you that. You know what I'm saying? All I can say is that I hope that some type of optimism and the best comes out of this, you know what I'm saying? And we wish you well, man. So yeah. Joey, if you're listening, you know what I'm saying? Get we wish you well, man. Get better and wish well. Thank you for the support. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. And real quick, uh, new music dropping from Kevin Durham. I am managing an artist by the name of Kevin Durham. He just dropped a track called All Good. He's dropping a... Oh, shit, I don't know if I can say this. Well, I'm the manager. You're the manager, bro. But uh, he dropped a picture, guys. If y'all go look at his picture, y'all might put two and two together of what he has going. So y'all go follow Kevin X Durham on Instagram, or you can find him at Kevin Durham on Facebook. All that other good shit, man. You can find him on my shit. Uh, he was our first guest we had on our show. And uh, and yeah, man. Super dope shit. Happy Carlos. birthday, bro. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Zero. Zero. Happy birthday, mm -hmm. Mac Miller. Mac Miller, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you for your, for everything you contributed to the game. Uh, facts. Um, fucking Big facts. dog. Like, I, this 2020 that I had, bro, was the worst year of my life. And fucking Mac Miller, his music got me through so much, so much. This fucking year, and unfortunately, the person that was there for me musically is not here with us physically, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Mac Miller. Um, happy Born Day, man. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, you have any shout outs? Um, I will be doing a Twitch show on Thursday, a little after one or around one. I have a podcast before that, and then I'll be on immediately after. We're going to be playing some music. I'll play some Mac, some Row. Uh, we had a good little three hour show last week. It was fun. Twitch crashed in the middle, so it kind of shut us down. Dope. Shut shut the party down. We had sixty six people rocking with us. Light yeah. flex. So yeah. So uh, Southside uh, Twitch TV slash uh, Southside DMG. Uh, we'll have some fun. Bring some questions, and if you want your music player, if you want me to play any music, uh, just make sure it doesn't suck. <laughs> that's the only rule. It's facts. that easy. It's that easy, man. And and and. Hoffa, that's that's one thing we do have on this show, man. Like, um, you know, we don't we don't invite anybody that's not dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you know, there was that one guy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, yo, he's kidding. <laughs> he's kidding. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, Mark the protege or something. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, we're all about putting the best content forward with our shit. You know what I'm saying? We know other platforms right, right. like. You know what I'm saying? They run certain ways or whatever. But mm -hmm. we over here, we like to make sure that we give people stories, background, and a little bit more of their personal selves and who they are. And on top of that, you just got to be dope, bro. Like, yeah. as long as the music is dope, you, you, you're going to get hit up, man. So thank you for accepting the invite and being here, man. Uh, real quick, if you could just let the people know where to follow you. All right, y'all can look me up at uh, Joe Hoffa Levis on Facebook, Hoffa the Mobster on Instagram, and uh, Snapchat. And uh, you can look up Music Corruption, YouTube. They got the whole squad shit there and my shit there. Y'all look it up, man. Yo, man. Hoffa's the first person to put a Snapchat 
on the fucking. You are. Yo, I, that's why I come. That is those. live. I ain't gonna lie. That's look super at, dope. Look at my life. <laughs> hey, you, you'll see a lot of my verses on there. S- spread challenge coming soon. Yo, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. that'd be live. Yeah. Man, Yo, you book. should really do something with that, man. Spread challenge for sure. If you're not gonna do a competition, spread challenge. <laughs> Yo, on the cool, you should you should you should get with your team and try to see what's up about that, man. Because I seen your pictures, bro, and I'm just like, yo, this motherfucker really loves this shit. Like, yeah, he really yeah. loves it. And it's like, fuck it, add it to the content. <laughs> add it to the artist, bro. Like, that'd be a dope way to give more of of, of who you are. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. I think that'd be tight. But anyways. You, you that's- set one of your songs to it, you know, and, and just hashtag spread challenge. We gotta, we gotta, you got to do it sooner than later. Though. We've, we've already put it out in the atmosphere. Yeah. You know, people are watching, people it'll are listening. Back, hashtag spread. Oh, yeah, bro, exactly. I'm, I'm going to go home and make one tonight. Fuck it. Hey, yeah. there we go. Dog. <laughs> That that and what's so cool, man? The things that we're talking about right now, because like I said, like I didn't want to shit, I didn't want to put too much time on like the uh, how can I say this? Uh, what got you into certain situations? You know, say so I don't want to do that. I wanted to do something do- different. I know other places might ask you like, what you do to get in there, all that other shit, and that's fine. Over here, I wanted to try something different. But what I did want to say is that when we're speaking on these things like that, where we're saying like the spread challenge and like you know, what I'm saying all these other things, they come from positions in your life where they weren't necessarily the best places you were in at the time but the fact that you can that we can have these ideas and all these other things and make them a positive out of your situations yes. i think that's Something dope came from that shit and and your yeah. music everything your experiences man i wish i knew and now you fucking know this is the overthinkers podcast huh. hashtag the ot where we got to ask ourselves do we think too much about it or not, not enough, enough about, about it. it i was here with my co-host dj mo cd Carlos was in the cut as usual. And Hoffa, thank you Once very again, much. We out of here, man. Y'all ready, y'all ready. Thanks Southeast for having me. Southeast, stand up. Y'all have a good one. Southeast, what it is. Yup. Yup.